All right, let's play a little game of identify the city. Can you tell me which city this is? What about the city? Maybe you can at least guess the continent. Any guesses for this city? The answers, Tokyo, Melbourne, Dallas, and Frankfurt. You might disagree with me, but I think there's something terribly wrong when cities from all around the world start to look the same. Welcome to Optimicities, where I share my thoughts on topics inspired by my travels. This video was inspired by my recent trip to Seoul, South Korea. I visited a street called Samcheong Donggil, and if you look it up on Google Maps, the description is a street featuring classic Korean architecture mixed with modern boutiques, restaurants, and more. It features mixed-use buildings that combine modern and traditional architecture, and this helps the area to blend into the traditional John Hanok village nearby. I really liked the architecture because it was modern yet something unique to Korea. We still had a mixture of modern cafes, art galleries, shops, and restaurants, and it got me thinking about how the culture of a city is important in the design and architecture as we move forward in the future. After all, buildings used to be a product of the environment they were built in. For example, many countries around the Persian Gulf utilized wind catchers or wind towers in their traditional architecture. Wind catchers are passive cooling systems that direct air from higher levels into the building. The temperature difference creates a pressure gradient that results in air currents for circulation. Anyway, these wind catchers have been around for centuries but were sadly forgotten by modern architects and are only now starting to make a comeback. Meanwhile, in Southeast Asia, low and variable winds combined with the humid weather and lots of rain led to designs like this. The steep and high roofs prevent rain from accumulating and provide space for ventilation. The overhang of the roof shades the interior from the sun, and homes were sometimes elevated for flood protection and to provide further ventilation to make use of vertical and horizontal airflows. In Tonga and Hawaii, curved roofs were built to withstand storms and cyclones and were made from local materials and trees such as coconut and koa. The form of the building allowed for both natural light and air ventilation. These are examples of traditional architecture unique to the environment, also called vernacular architecture. It essentially refers to local architecture that considers the people and the climate and local building materials, striving to be in harmony with the environment rather than fighting against it. But interesting architecture doesn't have to be native to one singular culture either. Sometimes architecture can tell a story of the history and politics of a place. This building has a style of Spanish architecture, but upon closer inspection, the unmistakable precision brickwork of the Inca is what provides the strong foundation of the building, and we can deduce that it's Peru. And while Spanish influence is noticeable in the Americas, another culture left their influence in Spain. The southern part of what is now Spain used to be under Islamic and Arabic rule between the 8th and 15th centuries. This influence is easily noticeable in the beautiful Moorish architecture found in Andalusia. But with technology and new building materials came a new age of architecture. Modern architecture beginning in the late 1800s sought to break away from tradition, and more recently steel skyscrapers became symbols of power, wealth, and western ideals. It became possible to basically copy and paste a building design in any city you want, hence this. And don't even get me started on the latest trend sweeping the United States. Although glass buildings are notoriously difficult to temperature control, tall glass buildings were constructed globally regardless of the climate. Buildings relied on new technology like artificial ventilation and air conditioning to provide comfortable conditions, neglecting the local and traditional methods that had worked so well and so simply in the past. As a result, you have buildings in places they were simply just not designed for. Darren Anderson has a great article in which he says, Everywhere looks like everywhere else, and as a result, anywhere feels like nowhere in particular. So for a while, boring, rectangular skyscrapers were popping up. Then came computer-aided design, or CAD. 
And once computer modeling became an available tool for architects, cold, tall buildings began to be replaced with more unique, outlandish, and funky buildings. But you can decide for yourself if you think these are really any better. Personally, when I visited Doha for the first time, I was overwhelmed by the new funky skyscrapers. They each seem to be trying to outdo each other. It's true that any one of these monumental buildings might have been a landmark in another city, but because there were so many of these landmark buildings in one city, the novelty wore off and none of the buildings really stood out. I mean, imagine yourself taking a vacation to a different country. If you're from a big city like New York or Tokyo, do you want to visit another big city with skyscrapers? Would you visit Paris if it looked like this? I think a big part of the European allure is that much of Europe has kept their traditional architecture intact while upgrading the building interiors for mixed use and city life. It's true that European buildings are just older than American buildings, but that's not to say that Europeans didn't also consider tall modern buildings. In the 1960s, Brussels began to construct large buildings that were considered modern at the time. However, these buildings didn't match the surrounding architecture or culture. Although other cities engaged in similar activity, the concept unfortunately became known as Brusselization. It refers to careless, post-war, top-down urban development typically characterized by the haphazard introduction of modern buildings with little regard for context. Luckily, Brussels and other European countries recognized the error of their ways, introducing new planning and zoning regulations that were designed to protect historic sites and architecture, even going so far as to reconstruct towns that were destroyed in the war. And thankfully today, you can still tell the difference between, for example, a street in Spain and a street in France. Because traditional vernacular architecture was designed for the environment it was built in, it's often more energy efficient. And using local materials is better for the environment too, as there's less reliance on imported materials. But the idea is not to return to pre-modern living with grass huts or mud buildings. Modern buildings follow codes that are designed to meet safety and comfort standards, and as cities are growing at a rapid pace, we will need technology to help with that. And simply recreating traditional buildings in modern cities is also not really what I'm going for either. After all, if done poorly, you run the risk of it looking more like a theme park than an organic city. But there's nothing wrong with incorporating modern technology with traditional vernacular design. This style of taking the best parts of traditional architecture and combining it with modern technology is called contemporary vernacular. But of course, sometimes new buildings must be built, and here are some examples of buildings and architects that do a good job of considering the culture and local environment while still making attractive and useful new buildings. Kengo Kuma is a Japanese architect that specializes in using natural materials and mixing in traditional elements into architecture that still manages to make a statement. Khalid Azam is an Islamic architect with some beautiful designs built for the modern world. The Wadden Sea Center in Denmark has a sleek design that blends into its surroundings with a thatched roof and wood exterior. If you have any architects or buildings that you really like, please do share it in the comments. What are your thoughts on modern vernacular architecture? Would you rather see iconic landmark buildings in your city? I mean, there's definitely a case to be made for that too. If you're interested in reading more on this topic, I left some links in the description below.